I'm going to show you every single tool I use for a killer graphic design workflow in 2025. But not only that, I'm going to show you how to use them with additional bonus tips along the way. And first up is Picula. If you've never heard of it before, you can think of it much like Google, but for color palettes, which is really cool. Now you just type in a word and it will instantly return a palette of colors visually associated with that term. And these are pulled from image search data. Now here's where things get really useful for us designers. Don't just type in things like blue or summer. Go deeper than that. Try things like calm, sadness, future, and so on. You want to use really emotionally charged terms. And if you do that, you will start to see color suggestions that carry emotional tone, cultural nuance, and thematic energy. And this will give you your project depth from the very beginning. Let's say you're branding a wellness app. You might type in something like tranquility into Picula, and it will hand you a subtle range of something like soft blues, soft earthy tones, and muted hues. And once you find that color, I personally would take the hex color code over to Adobe Color. And that is where the real construction actually begins. In Adobe Color, I might use the harmony rules, so maybe analogous for softer unified palettes, triadic for more dynamic balance, or split complementary when I really want some contrast with this design. Now Adobe Color also lets you check things like accessibility contrast, simulate color blindness, and preview light to dark variations. So if you're working on UI or brand identities, it's an essential step to make sure your palette works across all platforms and with all users. Next up is Zapier. And yes, I get it. This isn't technically a design tool, but it might be the one thing that quietly saves your creative sanity in your workflows. Now Zapier is all about automation. It connects different apps and services so they can talk to each other in the background whilst you're working. So let's say a client uploads a new file to Google Drive. If you create a zap around that, it will send a Slack notification, log the file path in Notion tables, and it could back things up in Dropbox, all without you lifting a single finger, which is really cool, of course. Now, if you publish content like I do, you can automate your marketing flow really easily. So for example, if I publish a YouTube video, it can also create a LinkedIn post, archive the script into Notion, and schedule a tweet thread about it. And yeah, this takes about 10 minutes to set up, but after that, it just works every time without lifting a finger. Zapier really does free up your mental space, so you're not just switching apps and getting lost in different kinds of workflows. And for us designers, that is huge, because the less time we're spending on this kind of tedious workflows, the more time we can actually design things. Now let's go deeper into those visuals. Rotato is one of my secret weapons when I want to make a design feel premium with minimal effort. It's a 3D mock-up tool, but it's way more polished than static PSDs. You can drop your design into a phone, a laptop, a tablet, or just a screen, and then rotate it in full 3D space. You can add subtle lighting, shadow effects, even motion. Then you can export it as a crisp video or animated gift, and suddenly, you've got a portfolio content edition maybe some client material to showcase, or a social media post that does look cinematic. But here's where it really, really shines. If you are a UI UX designer, maybe working on branding startups or designing an app, Rotato gives your work the finish it needs to stand out. You can even show off multiple screens in motion. So like a scrolling prototype or a feature set reveal. Compared to static flat mockups, this adds movement, it adds depth and realism with just a few clicks. It's especially powerful in portfolios, where even a subtle 3D tilt animation can make all the difference. I want to take a moment to talk about a tool that I literally use every single day and have done for almost a decade at this point, and that is Milanote, who are sponsoring today's video. Now, Milanote has been woven into the DNA of Satori Graphics from pretty much the beginning. And it's where I plan everything from YouTube content to design frameworks, branding strategies, and even client workflows. But what really makes Milanote different is how it mirrors the way creatives actually think. It's not just a project manager. It's more like a digital studio wall. I can easily drop in mood board images, sketch directly onto the board using the drawing tool and that is to annotate maybe some ideas or to map out font selections for a branding direction. 
it's just a very visual, flexible space. And this is ideal for the early stages of a design project because it is unstructured. I can freely drag and connect images, add text blocks, import logos, organize things with color, and even embed music tracks or YouTube videos. And I often use Miller Notes built-in design templates to get me started, whether I'm working on a logo design, visual identity board, or even scripting a design video just like this one. Personally, I do love how it allows structure to emerge naturally, not the other way around. And if I'm planning out a branding system, let's say, I can start messy, think visually, and gradually refine things into something more polished and more presentable. And if you haven't tried it, you can set up a free account right now, which the link in the description below will lead you to that. Whether you're a freelancer, a student, or in-house designer, Millinote gives you clear visual space to think and plan. Now let's talk about Font Share and Google Fonts. We all know about Google Fonts, of course, but Font Share deserves more attention. It is a free font library, and it's actually packed with fonts that actually look premium. I'm talking about high quality editorial serifs, brutalist style display fonts, and modern sans serifs, all licensed for commercial use, which is the big important part. And so the bottom line is, if you're on a budget, but you still want to look like you've invested in type, good quality type, this combination is unbeatable. Let's move on to asset organization. Now, if your design files and workflows look like pure chaos, you probably need something called Eagle. It's a visual library app that lets you save and organize fonts, illustrations, color palettes, screenshots, textures, mockups, you name it, it can probably do it. But the best part for me is the tagging and the search options. You can tag assets by style, by color, file type, or project type, and then actually find them later in these categories. Now you can maybe use it to build an internal mood board archive or track all of those fonts you've downloaded over the years. Really think of it like Pinterest for professionals, but it's offline and it's hyper organized. Now for finding actual design resources, Freepik is still one of the most useful platforms out there. They've recently updated their game a lot in the past couple of years with better licensing, better UI and even 3D models and AI generated content. You might want to filter things with the free options if you don't have a premium account, of course. Whether you need placeholder illustrations, mockups, icons, or even social templates, it's a time saver that can fill the gaps when you don't have the time to create things from scratch. And finally, let's get stuck into toggle track. If you're freelancing or just want to understand where your time is actually going every single day, Toggle is one of the best free time trackers out there. You can create separate timers for different clients or projects, tag tasks, and even see reports at the end of the week. One thing I recommend is to use it for a few weeks just to gather data on how long your designs actually take and what you're actually doing day to day. You might realize you're undercharging or misjudging your own creative workflow processes. So yeah, Toggle does help build time awareness without being too intrusive or too clunky. And you can find every single resource in today's video in the description box below. But if you do want to level up your design skills, just click that video on screen. But until next time, guys, design your future today.